Welcome to Time for Hope, a faith-based mental health program. Join our host, certified clinical mental health counselor and Christian psychotherapist, Dr. Frida Cruz, and her guests as they discuss real-life issues and offer expert clinical advice and solid biblical application for any and all life situations. Now, here's the host of Time for Hope, Dr. Frida Cruz. Thank you for joining us again this week for another edition of Time for Hope. With me today is speaker, columnist, radio host, author, and popular blogger, Shelley Rushing Tomlinson. And we're going to be sharing insights found in her book titled, Heart Wide Open. If you want and are searching to find your way from just warming a church pew Sunday after Sunday to an all out pursuit of the true God and the adventure of really knowing Him through a relationship with Jesus Christ, you will want to stay with us as Shelley and I give directions from her book related to how and where you start. And Shelley, it's great having you on Time for Hope and joining me as a another Southern girl. Our viewers don't have a chance this week. They don't. <laughs> we bonded immediately over our Southernness, yeah, don't we? Yes, I come from Northern Florida, born mm -hmm. and reared there. And uh, my people had migrated through from South Carolina, through Georgia mm -hmm. to Northern Florida, and my family is still there. My grandparents purchased uh, the property that many of them, or several of them, are living on. Oh, that's special. 100 years ago last year, oh, and it's special. remaining in the family, and I have a rich, deep Southern heritage. Yes, ma'am. Well, I'm delighted to be here with you, kind of on the other side of the interview for me because you know I'm a radio host back home, and so this is, um, you know, flipping the coin a little, and I'm excited about it. We, we have some exciting things to talk about, Absolutely. too, and I, as I said, I can identify uh, with your experience of warming a church pew, being in Sunday school, being at church every time the doors were open, as they mm -hmm. refer to it, Sunday morning, Sunday night, uh, Wednesday night, kind Sunday of prayer school, meeting. training union, Wednesday night prayer mm -hmm. meeting, um, and the whole um, thing. and. I so much wanted to know the Lord, mm. um, and I made a profession of faith. Yes, I was baptized yes, and made a profession of faith and uh, and tried to attend uh, church regularly. And uh, but it kept. I was just haunted. It kept uh, coming to me that. There was something There's missing. More. There's more. Mm -hmm. There's something missing. And I really, uh, my husband was not saved, and he found the Lord, and we headed off to seminary. Right. And um, the seminary professor, uh, finally I talked with him, one of the seminary professors, and told him this, this about this missing piece. Yeah. Uh, that I thought was in my life. And he said, oh, I was in Doubting Castle. That's what he called it. No. Well, later I went to him again. Um, he, my husband arranged for him to talk with me again. And it was in the car while my husband was preaching on Wednesday night inside. And I had two young children in the car with me. Oh, and, uh, but uh, anyway, he finally, after assuming I was a Christian, he mm -hmm. finally asked me to tell him about my life and mm -hmm. so forth. And he said to me, uh, Sister, I hate to tell you, but you really don't know the Lord. And I thought I, was, uh, I could find myself hanging over hell then. Uh, and uh, he, de he stayed with me until he asked me that uh, final question, can you stake your eternal destiny with Jesus Christ? And then the revelation came uh, that I could, and I was given the faith to do that. Amen. And did it ever change and, my life? And can we just say, bless his heart? Because he, you know, he meant well in everything that he was leading you to. But all the years that I just warmed a pew, that I, I believed God, I respected God, I believed God's word. Everything. Everything I can tell you that I believe I was headed to heaven had I left this earth, but I didn't know this this Jesus intimately, and that's what I came up against was going. You know, you 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 hold the word open, and there's this biblical experience that's not mine, 
what is the deal? What's the problem? You know, what, where's the passion that I see in the Word and why is that passion not in my heart? And, you know, I, I would say that you can live that life of um, believing in God and, and not ever experiencing well, His, you know how, his how nearness. You refer to that, uh, knowing Him in your head, uh, mentally, you have a mental ascent uh, mm -hmm. to the gospel and to the Christian mm -hmm. life, but it hasn't, it's, what is it, 18 inches between absolutely. year and year, they and say? Absolutely, and, and when we ever understand, or, or my my understanding and what has revolutionized my life, and it's just made me want to go to the ends of the earth to talk about Jesus, is that there's always more of Him, and that whatever I know as I sit here today, there's more for me to discover about Him. Mm -hmm. And whatever you know of Him with all that you have done and all the, you know, all the important work and the people you've interviewed and, and your life of faith, just to know that there's more, such, there's such excitement built into that. We I don't can, always say that. We kind of, we don't really teach that a lot yes. to keep after Him. Yeah, it's, it's not a mere profession of faith and being mm -hmm. baptized and then you're on your way. It, yeah. it, it, it's more than that. In fact, as I grow, as uh -huh. the scriptures encourage to us to do, to do. Uh, in Christ and learn more about Him as the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit reveals Him more and more to me, uh, I get more and more, I don't know about you, but I get more and more in tune with He's as much God as he is man. He's as much man as he, as he was God. And I get more and more in tune with his humanness. And, and that he can understand yes, me from that uh, yes, perspective. And that he just wants to walk and talk with us. You know how amazing that, that he came into this world so that he can make a way for us to walk and talk with him. And, you know, even as I start speaking, if you don't mind me, I want to say that um, I don't mean to disparage my Christian upbringing at all. So I'm so grateful for my parents that took me to those services you're talking about, the Sunday morning, the Sunday night. I'm so grateful my for the, the Wednesday night. I'm grateful for my Baptist grandfather who, who was my hero. I'm grateful for all of that. But uh, so only thing I was alluding to a moment ago is that sometimes we don't just keep encouraging each other to just keep growing, just keep after him because he can continue to reveal more of himself every day where the journey is ongoing. That's what I love to talk about. And you also mentioned it as an adventure. An and adventure. It is Unsurpassed. quite an adventure uh, And even in that, we don't mean just take a, up your, when Jesus says, take right. up your cross and follow me, mm -hmm. the, the venture began. Absolutely. Believe me. And if we look at it that way, that that profession of faith that you were mentioning a moment ago is not the end, it's the beginning. It's like we stepped into threshold when we made that profession of faith, and then life begins with Him. You know what I used to tell my Sunday school class, as long as you're going the same way the evil one is going, uh, there's not a, a whole lot of battle mm -hmm. going on, mm -hmm. but the day that you turn around and going in the opposite direction, you're in, God's upstream, way, yeah. uh, in God's way, you run head on with him, and the and the battle begins. Uh, you know, spiritual warfare mm -hmm. and the the battle between the flesh and the spirit. Yeah, so we're not saying that that great adventure is always. Um, a wonderful thing. Adventure means exciting. Adventure means challenging. Adventure has trouble in it. Risk, adventure, fear. risk, fear, all those things are encompassed in adventure. But he's just saying, hey, do life with me. Mm -hmm. I mean, do life with but me. I'll never leave. And I'll, I'll never, never leave, leave you. you. I'll Absolutely. never leave you. I'm going to go, you know, Absolutely. Uh, where I'll take you, I'll be with you. Right. And right. Uh, so forth. Uh, you make a statement that I think uh, says says it really well that we can't pass on what we don't have. Oh, that's what happened to me. I talked to you about in this book. This book is my, I, I call it my heart on a page. This of all my books is the book that I wanted to write because it's like, if you can stand on top of my shoulders and uh, avoid some of the circling that I did trying to develop this relationship with Christ, well, just stand on my shoulders and push me down the mud, get there faster. And that's what this is about because I had that, that just moment where you realize that, you know, I don't have anything to give my kids. 
And it was like a hypocritical moment that kind of slapped me in the face because I was wanting to tell them they were getting that age where they were not, not fisting to leave the home or about to leave home, but a few years from it. And I wanted to tell them, if you just hang on to Jesus, if you just go with the Lord, and if I wanted to say all these things that I'd heard all my life. And they were falling flat between us, even though, you know, I had been raising them in the faith and I felt like they were falling flat. And it was because I was trying to give them something I didn't have. I was trying to give them passion. And see, I had belief, but I didn't have passion. And so I'm trying to give them passion and it's not there. It's not working. That, yeah. that dog's not hunting, as yeah. we would say in the South, you know. <laughs> yeah. That, that passion comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, and Amen. Uh, so many of our people, bless their hearts, don't know the role of the, uh, the, that mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit holds in our lives. Mm -hmm. And really, it was Jesus giving himself to us Absolutely. to live within Amen. us when he left to go uh, home yeah. uh, to his heavenly Father. he said, Father. I'm, I'm coming back. Yeah. He said, I'm coming back. Yeah. And we dance all around that. Sometimes in the church, we talk about, you know, that Jesus is living in your heart. And, mm -hmm. and then people get all crazy and weirded out about the Holy Spirit. And, and his role and not realizing that it is one and the same. I mean, it's the Holy Spirit of our Lord and it's Father. His spirit, it is his spirit. It's, it's, not, uh, it's not anything weird. No. It's the Holy Spirit of this living God that wants to just do life with us. Yes, and He indwells our body. Amen. I mean, we're told that we have to treat it as His temple right. and so forth. I was a, a friend of uh, Dr. Stephen Oford. Yes, that did a lot of good preaching. Mm -hmm. He's well known, but it, it centered on the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. very, very often. And the last time uh, before he passed that we were together at a conference or something, we were talking and uh, I, I told him how much I had appreciated his teachings on the Holy Spirit, that that mm -hmm. was a, a theme of my teachings yeah. too. You know what he said to what me? Frida, never stop teaching, mm -hmm. never stop talking about the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. That was his last words he to me. He is our gift. He is yeah. our seal. Yeah. He, is, he is what we have. It's like that Jesus put in, God put in us as our pledge. Mm -hmm. And to get to know this precious Holy Spirit that's living in us is that foretaste. Yes that foretaste of glory. Well, he's the one also that kept us with that hunger. Absolutely. Uh, he and kept us with that, that want uh, mm -hmm. until he got us into the kingdom. And uh, I ask him all so. the time to stir that. And it's what I would tell our listeners that maybe are listening to us and like they can't even kind of figure viewers, out a place. Viewers, I'm radio, <laughs> I'm saying listeners, but our viewers that are, are trying to figure out a way to even plug in to what we're talking about. And I say in the book, the very first place I found to begin in, to love God passionately is to admit you don't. Like that, that's the best place to just, it's what I began doing and saying, you know, Lord, I believe in you, but I don't love you passionately. What's the deal? Fix this. Yeah. And that's the best place to start to love God passionately is to admit to him. He knows anyway. So you're really saying it to yourself, but admit that you don't. It was like that point when the professor said, I hate to tell you this, but yeah. you have not found the Lord. Right. You don't know the right. Lord. So yeah. uh, we all have to come there. Absolutely. We all have to come there. Time for break. And uh, we, we've got lots more uh, to share out of your book, but we can't share it all. Okay. But we can certainly encourage them to get a copy uh, so. of your book. And since they're telling me it's time for a break, we'll be right back. As a 17-year-old sat in front of me, I could see the struggle within the depths of his soul. It appeared to him that life had betrayed him, and he wasn't sure about God either. As I probed and encouraged him to share his thoughts, I discerned that he was searching for something he could not identify. I proposed the idea to him, and he admitted that I was absolutely right. I asked him if it were possible he was searching for God, and again he agreed that I was on track. Then I challenged him to get serious about his search and assured him that God was willing to be found. At that point, he began to share how he had tried to get right with the Creator God, but had failed again and again. 
So my next question was, what did he expect it to be like if and when he did make a permanent connection with God? He smiled and said that he would always be happy and things wouldn't be so messed up for him. I wish I could have agreed with him at that point and confirmed that he was right, but in all good conscience, I could not do that. So then I had the difficult task of advising him that he had been misinformed about the Christian life. Instead of it being a bed of roses in full bloom each and every day, I related that finding God did not bring an end to all of our problems and troubles. Then I proceeded to give him the good news that God was in control of the adverse winds of our circumstances. And instead of deliverance from the storms of life, he promised his strength to persevere through them. I went on to explain that instead of an external shallow happiness that a relationship with God gives us an internal and authentic peace in spite of what life has dealt us. And this relationship can be experienced by responding to Jesus' invitation to come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. As I encourage this young man to do, I challenge you to cease from your own labors and instead answer the invitation of Jesus Christ to know him personally and intimately and find what your heart and soul could be yearning for. Thanks for staying with us on Time for Hope. We always appreciate having you and your patience when we take these breaks. Our guest uh, that I'm uh, discussing her, uh, a, her book with, titled Heart Wide Open, is Shelley Tomlinson. And um, we're going to pick up, try to pick up, and move on from where we were when we went off uh, for the break. So Shelly, uh, let's, uh, that we've, I was looking at my notes and we've covered just we're about. We're two Southern we, girls. We, we were doing moved. some talking, weren't we? <laughs> we were doing some talking and some moving. Uh, but uh, you say this, and uh, really, uh, I totally agree, that going deeper with God could be the biggest jump of your life, uh, but help is only a whispered prayer. Oh, yeah. Away. That's, that sweet That's what I think scares people, though, when they think about what we've been talking mm -hmm. about, mm -hmm. a relationship with Jesus Christ. I, I believe fear lies at the bottom of reluctance uh, to do it, not knowing, knowing God's going to ask them to do something Absolutely. and not knowing what it's going to be and not really not having their wills uh, lined up Absolutely. with God's will or afraid to line their wills up uh, with God's will. So it it is a jump of faith, oh, though, if absolutely. they could understand that. It's a jump of faith. And they they have the that, more they have the I get to know the Lord, and we're talking about that, it's amazing after all these years uh, how much more I'm seeing about faith and what God said mm -hmm. uh, and was trying to say to uh, all of us when he said that uh, Abraham believed God and it was counted oh. to him for righteousness. Isn't that, yes. isn't that beautiful? You know, and you talk about that fear that people have. They're like, I don't know that I want to go all in. I mean, like, I don't know. I, I think I just want to just keep doing the deal, just going to church. And, you know, I don't really kind of want to get crazy because that's what we think. In the back of our head, we're like, how weird am I going to get? I mean, like if I go all out after this Jesus, like how weird am I going to get? And I tell people all the time, well, you're already weird. We all are. You know, I mean, go to Walmart. You can see that. We're all a little bit, you know, a little bit shy of sinner. Um, but the thing is, when Jesus was leaving this earth, he knew that the apostles, the disciples were quaking. And what did he tell them? He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. And see, what he was saying is what we would say to our viewers. If you believe in God, he was saying, you believe in a God way out there, 
believe in the God that wants to come live right here, that mm -hmm. sweet Holy Spirit. That's what he's saying, yeah. because that is the answer for that fear. Because he's, yeah. the Holy Spirit's going to be there with you on this journey as you strike out. He also said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Right. Isn't that something? That is uh, phenomenal. Uh, when, when we think Feast that, on that. Yes, uh, <laughs> feast on that a while. But uh, anyway, it is a jump from what you say, having just enough of Jesus to, uh, to never getting enough will, of Jesus. Yeah, it will never be enough. You know, I talk about in the book, uh, Dr. Frieda, that when I decided that I just did not have this passion for Christ, that I needed to know him intimately. And it came out of John 17, three, where Jesus himself said, this is eternal life, to know God mm -hmm. and the son that he has sent. And right. I was like, my thrust, my, my um, up until then, had been kind of like to make sure I was a Christian. I, I needed an assurance of my salvation. That's why I was nodding so vehemently while I go and aggressively with you. I went through that thing where I say, I did Dr. Seuss praying, Dr. Seuss prayers, like I prayed the sinner's prayer in a car. I prayed it from afar. I prayed it in a tree. I prayed it on bent knee. I was always trying to get an assurance of my salvation. And when my focus changed from trying to get an assurance of my salvation to I've got to know you, it took that off the table. It was years before I realized that that wasn't an issue anymore. It wasn't even coming up because he had confirmed in my heart that I was his. Yes. Uh, the verse that came to me that God uh, afterward, a few days afterward, that meant so much and still does to me was uh, the scripture says, for you were sometimes darkness, but now are you light in the Lord. Amen. I love it. I and love there was that. so much light where there was darkness. And the other verse that I use mm -hmm. uh, about darkness and light, because Jesus said, I am the light am the of light. the world, uh, it says, and this is what happens when we, we experience what we're talking about, mm -hmm. for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness, that was in, crea uh, you exactly. know, in creation, has shined in yeah. our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of Amen. God. Where? In yeah. the face Amen. of Jesus Christ. Beautiful. Uh, Just keep beholding Him. Yes. You know, that's our work. The, the gospel say that's the work is to believe in him. And then we, we try to do all these things. But if we just continually behold him, we're transformed into his image. You know, the epistles tell us this, but we, we, we need to, to realize that he does it all. We just behold him. Mm -hmm. We just look at him mm -hmm. and we continue to behold him and he takes it from there. Well, uh, anybody that we, uh, you know, think a lot of, try to behave like they behave, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. And uh, we do it with other people. people. So if we do it with the Lord, uh, it's just like my son said to me recently, we, something was going on, had to do with uh, a, a card uh, mm -hmm. that he had given me and how he had addressed it. Yeah. And it was like his father used to, right. the two of them used to call me a nickname and oh, he had that on that card. That's sweet. And then we talked, uh, I said, when did all this start? And we started laughing mm -hmm. and he said, then he showed me some more things that were going on. He said, I'm beginning to realize I'm a, I'm a lot like my father. Absolutely, and he's supposed to be. And we're supposed to be like our father. Uh, yeah. If you don't mind me adding this, we were talking about that just enough thing. And when I was talking about that Dr. Seuss praying, you know, that search for assurance of salvation. See, up until then, I had wanted just enough Jesus mm -hmm. to make sure I was okay with him. And that's the just enough Jesus that will never be enough. That's when you keep searching. But, you know, when you're not assured of your salvation, when you're trying to get just enough Jesus to get to heaven, it's never going to be enough. No, no it, it isn't. Let's end with this thought um, that um, we are on this adventurous journey, but we've we've got to have a goal. And what's got us on this journey? Where is this journey going? It's taking us uh, to heaven uh, is taking us to uh, to the time when Jesus is going to sit on that throne as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Wow. Back, by the way, uh, our viewers might not know that's going to be back on this mm -hmm. earth, restored mm -hmm. and like the Garden of oh. Eden, which there again, we have a hunger. Amen. We have a hunger for the garden. Amen, uh, because he our, put it in us. Yes. As Ecclesiastes yes. 3.11 says, he put eternity in our hearts. Yes. And, We're uh, searching for him. 
because it, he put it, that in us, to search for him. Thank you so much, Shelley. Oh, it's for been coming. an honor. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for coming and sharing your book with us. So much more in it uh, and between these covers, and I encourage our viewers to get a copy uh, of the book. And they can have it for whatever they want to send us. We're not even putting a, a oh, price on it. You. So uh, God bless you. That, um, it's thank worth you. The, their time to order it and read it and hear a lot more of what you have yes, to, or find a lot more of what you have to say in it. And I, ha I, I uh, have some things to share with you from uh, one of our viewers. Dear Dr. Frida, please pray for me to be made whole in the Lord, strengthened and shaped into obedience. Also pray that I would receive spiritual healing in my soul and physical healing in my body. What a beautiful prayer request here. Be assured we have taken this request to our Heavenly Father who can answer this prayer request without, uh, without any problem whatsoever. Just hang in there uh, with these desires and, and this prayer and we've prayed for you and it finishes with, I want to have hunger for God. And that's what we promised to start with. That's where it has to start. Amen. Hungering for God. And once you find Him, you continue to hunger for more and more and more. So if you haven't shared your prayer request with us, we invite you to do it and assure you that we will be taking that prayer request to someone who can answer that prayer. And that is the true God. And then uh, I have uh, someone that has written and said, uh, Dear Dr. Frieda, I just recently started watching Time for Hope. I find it so inspirational at this time in my life. Thank you for having the prayer program on television and we so greatly appreciate your prayer requests and we appreciate your kind notes uh, that come in uh, to Time for Hope. And the next uh, request I have is that you join us again next week uh, for another edition of Time for Hope. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive a copy of today's resource for a contribution of any amount to the Time for Hope ministry. Call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. When you call or write, prayerfully consider a donation to our ministry. Our ministry's mission is to offer hope to discouraged and hurting people. As we continue to give out messages of hope, a financial gift of any amount to support this ministry will be greatly appreciated. When you do this, you are joining us in offering hope to many viewers seeking help and hope for their situation. This will also enable us to inform and inspire some viewers to expand our mission as they learn and in turn can minister more effectively to hurting people around them. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.